I'm not scared of giving birth. I'm not scared of the pregnancy. Mm. Uh, I think I would like the attention. Yes. But, you know, I think it'd be funny to have a baby. But then it's like, <laughs> like, how what funny would that it? be? if I? Yeah. But then what do you do with exactly. it? Good morning, hunties. Welcome to Out and About. This is a Trish-free episode, so you can all come out now. It's safe for everyone. Um, I'm joined <laughs> with my co-host, trans, trans activist and former Jew, Marty Marie um, Morticia Adams. It's great to be with you, Joe. Thank you. Now you're now you are presenting in front of the camera today. We have Sandra behind the scenes. She is um, manning the many of the controls. Did you ever see um, Wizard of Oz? I have seen Wizard of Oz. Well, yes. Did you feel like the Wizard of Oz, Sandra? Behind the curtain. <laughs> oh my god! You've never seen Wizard of Oz. No, I have. Oh, ah. Uh. Well, Trish has been sequestered to the woods where she belongs, back to her roots in the jungle. Yeah. How was your weekend? It was. Um, I don't remember. Not at all. Not a. What'd you do Friday? Wait. Oh no no. When was it? there was a horse race? I went to a horse race. That was Saturday. Oh, Friday was a drug fueled night. Then okay. What'd you do? <laughs> and Saturday. Of course, yeah. Friday and Saturday, I did I did um drug. I went out into drugs, but I don't remember where. Saturday there's a horse race, and I lost a bunch of money. I went on the food. The, the, I went on the sports book app. I lost all my money. I went on the. I went on betting. I was pressing all the buttons. All the um. Like on the thing, you could press like all the horses' names. Yeah. So I made a whole bunch. I started putting a bunch of pushing buttons in, and I said, "Okay, this is random." But so, so I just, I just uh, wanted to do a cross check. So I sent it to Marty Mush, and I asked him to re review them for me. And he said, "These are actually really good picks. I like them a lot." So I was like, "Oh my god, yes!" So I bet them all, and I didn't win any any money at all. That stinks. I actually won money on the Derby. What should you bet on? Mage, the winner. I, I bet on like three horses. One of them happened to win. I was gonna bet on the Mandarin Oriental horse. <laughs> then there was another one called like shit show or Smith, uh, something show. I forget something, whatever. Well, none of my teams won. And I, that's why I don't gamble. Because if I lose five dollars and a scratch, if I get fucking pissed off. Yeah. How much did you win? Uh, Like 150 bucks. I don't know. Covered the night. What did you wager? Uh, G Whatever. What was it? I think it was like 16 to one. So probably put like 20 bucks on it. I don't know if that math is right. Something like that. Well, I'm not, I have a bad taste in my mouth now from gambling. Yeah. Um, but I did go out that night. I had some drinks in the backyard. I was drinking mint juleps. To drink, drink mint julep. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Those are you know. I think they always need a little something else. You just like mint julep straight up with like the sugar syrup, the bourbon, and the mint. That's it. So, uh, yeah, typically. And something funny about that. My mother bought me when I graduated from high school. She bought me a mint julep kit <gasps> with the cups. Yeah, thinking that like I would just have it forever and just always be making mint juleps. <laughs> Oh, it's in your heritage. Yeah, it's it's somewhere it's somewhere in our house. I have no idea. Um, I want to get those mint julep cups. If you need to know where they, I get them at my tablescape store, they sell them. For, I get them for cost. Yeah. Um. Um. Let's let's get into the episode. Like we we don't need to do like too much of this, but uh, I did go to my first gay bar this weekend. Where? Uh, I went to the gym. Gym uh, bar and Fort Yeah, on uh, on Eighth Avenue. Avenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent many moons there. Uh huh. Yeah. Did you go in the basement. No, I didn't know there was a basement. So I've I've walked by it a lot because I live around there, and uh, they have that little like Front patio. smokers patio. Yeah. So like when uh, uh, Haley had a friend in town uh, uh, who's gay, and he like wanted. She to told me about that. Yeah, and uh, he wanted to go to a gay bar, so like that's where we just decided we were going to go. And I was like, okay, I'm just buying cigarettes and just giving them away. Well, unless that. he has, unless he likes um, very sporty black men from Harlem, I don't <laughs> think that that would be the place for him. That's all. That's all that's in there. It's we all. Actually, it's all. It's ninety percent black, good athletic. Hot guys, but it's all black men that like to watch sports. Yeah, no, I actually did. And they're all from Harlem. Yeah, no, no, no. I actually did meet a, a black guy from Harlem. Yeah. Fan of the show. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We took a picture with him. But like, yeah, I, I must. Great bar. Really fun. But that's, I mean, they have their, they have their clientele. That's, that's what, that's the majority of the guys there. And um, so if you like sporty black guys, go to the gym bar. You're going to like what you see. Yeah. Um, um, and they have a basement that's fun. It looks like a locker room down there. Um, there's like lockers and stuff. And um, <laughs> nothing dirty goes on down there. But um, I spent many years at gym bar. Yeah. So right on the strip. We call the strip anywhere back in the day, back when I'm aging myself, um, 14th Street to 23rd Street on 8th Avenue was called the strip or the really? gay ghetto. Are there are all, are they all gone now besides so, that? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's that neighborhood has been gentrified by um white girls from the Midwest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh who'd we have on this episode? Uh, this is Kat Temp. Kat Temp. Now, I didn't know what to make of her. I, she was brought over to my desk. Trish brought over to my desk. She's an, she's an old work a, a, a old cohort. Yeah. She used to work here many moons ago, and, um, and I didn't know anything about her. I know she wrote a book because I saw that on my desk as well. And um, but I learned I like on this episode I got to learn a lot about her, and she's she's uh, very intriguing. I like her. 
Yeah, I'm she's a, a little bit of a hot mess, and I like that. Yeah, no, 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 it's great. Way Actually, more than like you a, would expect she's from. She's much more of a no. She is a hot mess. Yeah, totally. Of. And like you don't expect that out of your news pundits. So well, also, makes, she looks put together on the outside. Yeah, you know, she has glasses on, so that makes anyone look more responsible. Yeah, I used to have such a crush on her. You and did like, you it, worked here with her? No, 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 no. This is like way, but this is like right when I dropped out of law school, like in 2015, when she now, got. Was famous. she a problematic queen like um like that Lori Tomlin, Tori Lamont? What's her name? Tommy Loren. Tommy Loren. Uh, no, way more, uh, way more down to earth than that girl. And Kennedy, the girl she always keeps talking about, Kennedy. I love she her She used too. to be on, um, on MTV. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. As in like, like late 2000s. In the 80s. In the 80s. No, it was the 80s. It, it was. was the 80s? I think so. She's that old? Um, well, she looks great. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but no, she's, she gets, she breaks it all down. She talks about her books. She talks about her wildlife, all her addictions and, um. It's interesting. Now, how do you think Pat's doing in the woods? Uh, if you don't know, <laughs> Pat, Pat went to go on some reality show. They, they knew better than to ask me because I don't do that kind of shit. No. Um, I, I don't be playing all my time. Um, but she, so he's in the woods for the most dangerous games. It's hosted by Roan. And it's um, basically a fear factor and survivor. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And one, Grace O'Malley's there and um, Rudy and Francis. Spider and Francis. Yeah. So there's all those people there. And they got to sleep in the bushes. That's a hell no for me. Pat is my pick to come in last. Sweet. Official. Who do you think he's going to beat the Dana Beers. Oh, I forget Dana is still there. Yeah. The thing is with Pat, the thing, it's, a, it's all about like an alliances and Pat is not a trustworthy person. He's a, he's a, you know. Well, he's proven it in proven like two, in all, in all two the, different reality shows yes, already he's that he's known, a slimy he's piece He's known of to be a <laughs> snake and, yeah. a, and, a, and a thrower <laughs> under the busser. Yeah. So he, he knows that. So if it's a game of skill, like uh, Billy Football got thrown out first last year. Um, you know, cause he's also that kind of like, has that kind of that energy about him. Like, you know, he can never yeah. tell if he's telling or not. I think the people that might win the best is the game. People that have like a more mind games. I think Francis will do very well, um, because he's very intelligent and knows how to, you don't ever know what you're getting with yeah. him. Athletic so, too. So he can do all the like, yeah, yeah, I think he'll do well. I think Grace O'Malley, I loved her to death. I don't think she's going to last very long. Probably not. Yeah. Francis. Yeah. I think he's, he's I think he's very strategic and smart. And I think he's able to, you know, put him, put himself out of the situations and get himself to the end. I'll go wild card. I'll say Jackie from KFC radio wins. Oh, that'd be nice to see. Yeah. She almost won. Surviving bar stool. She almost won. Yeah. Would you ever do that? Trish? I mean, not Pat. What's your name? Marty. Marty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited about tonight. I've, I have Bay's birthday was this weekend. Yeah. Um, but so last this weekend, like we kind of just laid low because he had a bunch of plans with his friends. Um, so this is my day. We're getting him. So I rented out a penthouse in Brooklyn. That sounds awesome. I wish it's going to be good. good now, the one I really wanted was $4,000 a night. Um, and I was like, I can go on vacation for that. So yeah, I'm not yeah, yeah. That. A nice vacation. Yeah. So yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. doing that. Uh -oh. So I got, um, I used points and um, moved some funds around to get the one I got tonight. Um, it's going to be just as nice though. But I love going to Brooklyn. It's like, I love, it's like um, a little bit of a mini vacation, like a staycation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to get into a few different restaurants right now. I'm still not sure where I'm going to go. We're going to, oh, oh, I had last night and I was going to call you guys and give it to you, but right. I forgot to do it. Um, I had a, a table for two for eight fifteen at Bed Roman, and I was gonna. Oh, uh, I was gonna call. Was gonna we couldn't. Have, we couldn't have pulled it off last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah no, we're going. What's it called? Uh, it's New British Steakhouse. Uh, Hawksmore. We're going to Hawksmore. Where's that at? Uh, not sure where it is, but like it's like huge in London right now, and like this one, I don't know if it just opened, but like it's like sort of new. Well, this is good right on the time for the Queen's coronation. Yeah, exactly. Did you go? I did not go. I you was not in the um, Tommy Smokes and um, and Nick went. Nick yeah. went to the to the inauguration. Yeah, I can't wait to see whatever that video is. Yeah, they were sponsored by um, um, Blue Bottle Coffee. I believe what's it called Stella Blue. Stella Blue Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> um, Should we get to the interview? Yeah, let's hop right into it. Without further ado, please welcome to the stage Cat Tim from Fox Five. Did you see the dinner I posted last night? I did. It looked amazing. Those chicken thighs. Now, normally that's one of, you thought it was one of my crafted recipes that I came up with myself, but it's not. It was HelloFresh. It was? Yes. I buy, I've been buying HelloFresh since, because I'm trying to get back in the, the swing of things. The warm weather's here and it, it hits you like a truck. You don't realize how quick swimsuit season's happening. I know. Exactly. I, I, I haven't been doing HelloFresh yet. I need to really start. I know because the thing is I'm doing the calorie smart because I was trying, I'm trying not to go out to eat as much. I'm trying to save money and I'm trying not to, um, 
eat bad. So I got the calorie smart meals from them. So I make a, you know, you get a protein, a vegetable, and it's like pretty heavy. They have all the calories on there for you. But HelloFresh makes it so easy because I don't have to come, we'll go to the grocery store because you have me here at the office like six days a week nowadays. So I don't even have time <laughs> for myself to go to the grocery store. So I have my groceries delivered from HelloFresh. I just get home. I take out the card. I keep it on the top of the fridge and I get my recipe card. And when it has everything step by step, you tell, it tells you what pans you need to bring out, what utensils you need to bring out. Everything's right there. And then you just got to chop, cook, and put your dinner on the table. And I have dinner for me and Bay on the table within um, about 20 minutes. And another thing is I lie and say there's four people in my house, um, but it's only two of us. So that means I have lunch for the next day. Then I make, I make a portion for four. I uh -huh. eat, we each want, eat one. And the next day I have um, that. And if you're not a pro in the kitchen, they have like, it's so easy. Like I'm a pro, but this is giving me uh, recipe ideas that I never even thought of. And it's just so easy, especially now the summer's here. You want to be out hanging out with your friends. You don't have to be grocery shopping and worrying about what you're making for dinner that night. I've done HelloFresh a few times and it just could not be any easier. Like even an idiot like me knows how to do yeah, it. Yeah. And it's so much better than takeout because you're saving money, you're eating healthy and they have all different options, whether whatever your dietary restrictions are, they got something for everyone and we got something for you. So go to HelloFresh.com right now. So HelloFresh.com slash out and about 16 and use code out and about 16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash out and about 16 for 16 free meals using code out and about 16. All right, we're here with Kat Timpf, um, author of the, I would say, future New York Times bestseller. It is a New York Times bestseller. It is already? Yeah, number you, three on the list. Are you serious? Yeah. Good Lord, you can't joke about that. Uh, thanks for coming in, Kat. Thanks for having me. So good to see you. I know. I was saying, well, I was telling Marty, last time I saw you, I think it was like 3 a.m. in your kitchen. Yeah. I, it's the only time I ever have Snapchat. <laughs> like, my memories will come up, and it's me and Kat with like, a devil face on yeah. in the kitchen, like, ah. Yeah, well, that, that was, was like COVID time, right? That yeah. was like a different time. I actually yeah. haven't had any cosmetic surgery. I just really? wear like big padded bras, so nobody knows I don't have boobs and a lot yeah. of fake hair, you know? Same. <laughs> yeah. Same for you. Like this bra, actually my friend Keith, who I brought last time, he was also yeah, yeah, a flower yeah. girl at my wedding. He's worn the bras that I wear every day for drag before. Like that's, <laughs> that's built, how built, bad built for, for speed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, you worked here and we talked like a little before we started, you worked here in 2016 mm -hmm. back in the day. And I'm saying the last time you were here was like, there, I think there's a famous video of you and Chaps and Dave on the chair and Chaps is like blacked. Was it for the election? Yes. And Chaps is blacked out drunk, like emotional cat sitting there with like a rig vape. Yeah. Huge humongous vape. cloud of smoke, but you're off the vape now. Yes. I'm eight months off the vape. That night was, Ooh. yeah, he was trashed. I forget all the stuff he was saying. Something about how I had like Rob O'Neill on my podcast, but like I'm not a veteran. I don't remember. And he was getting really wasted. And then he passed out in the office that night. Yeah, he fell so. asleep right outside the radio studio. Yeah. No, no blanket, no pillow. Chaps is just <laughs> right outside yeah. the thing. Yeah. Um, how's Fox? It's great. You're I on have, Gutfeld. I'm on Gutfeld, which Gutfeld. is it's it's very it's a very different show than anything else, obviously, on yeah. Fox, which is why people sometimes agree. I work at Fox, but it's a lot different than like I'm not ever oh, gonna you be asked to explain it to us. We right, don't, I know. Don't give a fuck. But we people don't give are a like, fuck. I'm never gonna be asked yeah. to fill in on Fox and Friends, for example. <laughs> you know, is, that why, is Fox and Fox News the same thing? Yeah. It well, is, right? Fox News. It's on yeah. Fox News, but it's at How's eleven. The, what's the temperature there now that Carl left? Dude, it's so funny Carlson. because everybody <laughs> asks me that and I have absolutely no idea. Yeah. I he never is in New York. I've interacted with him maybe like five times. I have yeah. absolutely no idea. What was he like? That's what everyone always asks. I have no I all I knew is that I saw him put a zin in once. He loves oh. other than that. I mean, I love I do that. I do I use a lot of nicotine still, the gum and the pouches and all you that zen? stuff. Yeah. A lady, oh, yeah. A lady, oh, Marty's oh, yeah. got one. A lady yeah. who zins. <laughs> I never got into that. I like the idea of it though. Can I try one, Marty? Sure. I think it's hot. I, I would have one actually. I need a healthy more. addiction. I think this could be it. I think it's. I think it helps me think more when I'm on the nicotine. <laughs> oh, you know you what I mean? It's, would you like one? Yeah, I'd love one. Those are the <laughs> sixes. I was for a while when I quit. There was this other company. Because those are the sixes. Called, I know you know you know what there they was are. this other company. Those are the sixes. <laughs> there was this other company called Lucy, where that did twelves, and I was I had was doing twelves for a while. What's a twelve? In a double six? that. Twelve milligrams. Yeah, is like this double make that. Y'all lightheaded and goofy. No, nah, it shouldn't. It might, but I don't know. Hopefully. I mean, <laughs> With any luck. <laughs> is it, does it have the same effect on your bowels that it does regular cigarettes or no? Unfortunately not. The, yeah, oh, there's no. no flavor to it. Oh, spearmint. D but, give it a second. 
Let it warm up. I was fun. bad. I, I was bad when I was vaping. I had to quit for 24 hours for some dental thing. And I covered my whole body in nicotine patches. And I still like didn't feel good. <laughs> and I looked it up. And that amount of nicotine should have killed me, actually. So, <laughs> are, you, are you the one that goes to the vape stores and like knows the guy's name? And they fill it up with juice in the back. And you're talking specs with him? I was. Specs. Yeah. Have you ever <laughs> done that? You go into these vape stores. And I just like my little elf bars, like little gay things. Yeah. Um, and I just ask those. But these, these like serious vape heads come in. And like, uh, yeah, I was doing a 2.5 like, last night. But I was pulling, I was pulling a little lag. Ish. So I think <laughs> and they, they fill it up with different flavored juices, different numbers, and they have, they, they, they have a bar and they like take it apart. They take them. Um, You're talking about the liquid they, like rig or no, refill. These are liquid, I feel so fucking. But the cool machines with this. Yeah. too. Yeah. The machines they have there, they're like talking about specs in the machines. Like it's like a it's like a NASCAR thing with these fucking vapes. Yeah, I I used to vape on the airplane like I would bring a blanket and just sit under it and vape yeah. I can't I mean that's like a federal crime probably yeah. like that's yeah. like a big deal because I couldn't stop and it was just controlling my life at a point where I was waking up with it every day in my hand I started to feel like I needed to use two at the same time and I was like two this, at the same time yeah I was like this is a little bit <laughs> two vapes at the same time two at one in your nose one in your mouth I did do that before oh I did do that God. before so I was like it's out of control why did you and stop? that was that's where it ended for you that's what it ended no, for no me. but just just your addiction that's where it never got any worse than, than vapes yeah, no, I'm not. Addi- I've never been addicted to anything. Well, that's else. good. Yeah, I'd mm-hmm. rather be that. You know, do you have something you'd like to get off your chest? We all know my addictions. <laughs> <laughs> let's run that. Let's run down the list. <laughs> Bed Bath and Beyond candles. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Big dicks. Okay. And fried chicken. Okay. And don't mm-hmm. forget, black hairstyles. Mm, I was gonna say <laughs> Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, black Sauvignon hairstyles. Blanc. <laughs> <laughs> Big dicks. Protective ever, hairstyles. Do you ever get tired? <laughs> Do you ever get tired, like just a giant penis coming at you all the time? No. Oh no, I'm kidding. I like. I just like, <laughs> I just, like holding them. No, of course not. I just not. like holding them, but I, you know, I have to, you know. What do you mean you like holding them? With my ass cheeks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> With my asshole. But, um, actually, how's your husband? He's speaking fan- of big dicks. You know my husband. <laughs> he's fantastic. He's, you should see him. Oh he, my god. He's yeah. He's Can I go- Google him. He's yes. yeah. Uh, our yesterday was our anniversary, actually, our two year Ooh, wedding anniversary, anniversary two year which wedding. is absurd. Um, when I was working here, I was like, it does that. I mean, I only dated like trash and I love trash. And <laughs> I'm, I, that's why I wasn't interested in him at all at first, because he's like a good man with a good job. He's like an army family. like guy. Yeah, he was an army ranger. And I told him on our first an date. Army ranger. Cameron yeah. Friska. Yeah, I told him on our first. Frisha. 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 I never changed my name. I never will. On our first day, I was like, you went to Afghanistan. I'm like, why Why were we ever over there? And he, <laughs> on our first date, which was like a huge risk, obviously, yeah. but I also didn't you care. You get political on the I, first like, I 10 didn't seconds care. of the day. Oh, very cute. Yeah. Was he missing for some time? No, but no, oh my God. It says cat, yeah, she's had, had, him locked, had him locked up in Hudson says, Yards for about two years. It says he's missing. It said cat husband missing. It was like a big headline. Yeah, it auto what? Where'd he go? I don't know. I think like Gottfeld's <laughs> made jokes about him missing and people sometimes don't get that. They're like, <laughs> I didn't want to bring it up, but I just did. I was like, it's like, I'm just going to pull the, pull the bandaid like, so off. You he's, did find now, him? He's, safe, he's safe, right? <laughs> Can we get him on the phone so now? He did. Actually? He is safe. He's, yeah, he's yeah. so patient because. It says cat Tim husband and tequila tequila. Tila Tequila, tequila X. Oh, I got into like a Twitter feud with Tila Tequila a few uh, years ago. I don't know. What I just made that up. My I just made that up. Oh, I bet. <laughs> so many feuds doesn't even know which one is real and which he, is not. Yeah, but he's like shy. So all the attention gets to be on me. You know, he's patient. I didn't like him at first. And I just like drank five tequila sodas. And then I ended up having a fun time. Ignored him for a few weeks. Break down fun time. Fun time. Um, I was just talking a lot. He was interested in what I had to okay. say. A lot so of attention. So not fucking on the first day. No, actually yeah. not on the first day. That's probably why it lasted. Because you like, you guys, maybe? Yeah. I is mean, it that simple? I don't think. I don't. Is it that simple? I don't no, think it's that simple. Not. I think that when it's bad, when people have sex on the first date and someone lose interest is if they sleep with someone on the first date and then like feel bad about it. Yeah. They're yeah. like, Oh, I don't do this. Like, I don't do this. Like, Hey, like just so you know, last night, sorry that I had sex with you. Like that's yeah, th- that yeah. insecurity oh, is what's a turn it. off. I think I can promise. I've, those words have never been uttered out of my mouth, out of my mouth, before, <laughs> out of my mouth no. before. No, but I think women feel bad sometimes. Yeah. That's the turn off. Because there's a, st- there's like a stigma. It's yeah. like all oh, the women, but I think that's going away. I hope so. Right. I mean, if you're going to do it, just own it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Exactly. First time I went to their house, I walked in and I was like, "Were you?" I was like, "Are you? Were you in the army?" Because it's like <laughs> a big frame thing with like metal. I think it's in his office. Yeah, or his something. uniform. Yeah, I was like, "Oh my god." Yeah, I make a rule that like all that stuff stays in his office because although as a half veteran, because when you get married to a vet, it's like all oh, half and half. half so I'm a half veteran because I am married to a veteran. And <laughs> can you get on the plane first? <laughs> That's I should She's ask that block. next time they're boarding, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. current active military. <laughs> you walk up. What about? Half veterans. 
as a half troop, I support yeah. the yes. troops, but I just feel like the military decor kind of like creates a certain vibe in my home that I don't necessarily need in the living yeah. room. You know, yeah. they, I thank him for his service all the time and he has it all. He has his like lacrosse photos and his. And then he thanks you for your service. And, and he you get thanks back me up for my knees. service. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's unbelievable. And if I can get married, anybody can. Cheers, girl. You know, I were talking about the, the Kentucky Open, whatever it's called, and everyone was drinking mint juleps. But you know what I was drinking? Mamitas? Yes, I was drinking the spicy um, margaritas. The tequila I, seltzer? Tequila seltzer and Palomas. Um, if you haven't tried Mamitas yet, this is our new favorite drink of choice. I've been drinking it for years. It's tequila and soda. It's 95 calories. It's gluten-free. And they have seven delicious flavors. Mango, pineapple, lime. And the new cocktail pack, that's the one you're sitting right in front of us. They have Paloma, spicy marg, classic marg, and tequila sunrise. Now, I like to break the pack up. Um, I love the spicy marg and the Paloma, but Bay loves the margarita and the tequila sunrise. So we, it's a, it's a perfect match. I love the tequila sunrise. I also love the pineapple. None of them. You can't go wrong with any of them. You can put them in a cooler. Um, I've been going to the Central Park a lot lately and the, the guy, my cooler, I have the rolling cooler. I fill it with mamitas, a bag of ice, and we have refreshments for the entire time. That's perfect. And as a guy, like I'm not a huge tequila person. I never have been, but I do love mamitas. So if you're not a tequila person and you're worried about, ooh, do I want to try mamitas? Do it. They're awesome. They taste so good. I mean, everyone says, I don't like the way tequila tastes. Um, these just taste so good. And they, they, they really, they feel like, you know, you get, they don't get floated and full like you do with a lot of other ca- heavy calorie, heavy sugar things. Uh-huh. These, some of them only have like uh, 0.9 grams of sugar. Some have one gram of sugar, but they're low in sugar, low in calories, only 95 calories. And they are gluten free. So they're great for um, if you're staying off the gluten. Um, and seven delicious flavors. And made with real tequila, 95 calories, fine mamitas at drinkmamitas.com or order on GoPuff. That's drinkmamitas.com or order on GoPuff. Find yourself some Amitas. You're going to like what you see. We guarantee it. Well, you tried to get into the military right now. Well, you know I couldn't because I have a high arch. Yeah. that's. <laughs> I was wearing I a pair too. of red pumps the other day and he noticed. <laughs> and I see, he asked, he asked yeah. about it and I said, I said, well, that's, that's why I couldn't get in. But it's probably for the better. <laughs> yeah, I, that, that sucks. The high arch. Yeah. No, I would never do that. I would never have a high arch because it's a choice, not a... Uh, why well, I've worked on I worked on on point for many years. <laughs> <laughs> you did walk on point for many years. So the ballet is ballet. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. I, I can never do any sort of physical activity whatsoever. at all. No, I tried so long to play volleyball, and this is what happens when people. I mean, look at this. Like I was going to say, you're I, tiny. I can't. Yeah. I, and I would just try anyway. I just thought, like, for some reason, but was I, it like New York, like uh, bullshit, like Zog Sports crap. I used to do that. No, like middle school, like I. In oh. eighth, middle, <laughs> yeah, like in. I spent the whole summer, like in eighth grade, I was on the seventh grade team. And what they Ooh. would do is they would rotate me in. As soon stay as, back a year. As soon as it was in volleyball. <laughs> yeah. As soon as it was my turn to serve, they would just rotate me out because they were like, this isn't going to be able to happen for her. But that's what happens <laughs> like when you tell kids they can be anything they want to be. Like, that's not true. I also tried to I auditioned oh, for musicals. I wanted so badly to be a theater kid, but I'm tone deaf. And to the point where. I took singing lessons and the lady called my mom like, we can't take your money. We don't feel right about this. But I would still audition. I'd get up on stage and I'd just sing happy birthday. I'd be like, all right, the lead or maybe like the second. No, because I'm like a star. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. You have to be realistic <laughs> when you tell your kids you can do anything. Like, but there's boundaries, though. Yeah. There is. There should be boundaries. You, know, just, you have to teach them young. Otherwise, you're going to be set up for disappointment. Yeah. Teach, tell your tell your kids that dream they big, can't sister. Do but, yeah. but, you know, just know you'll never yeah. be a premier ballerina. You're not going to have kids, are you? You want kids? That's, uh, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not kids. sure if I want kids. Yeah. I talked about this when I was on KFC. I have, I, we froze embryos. So I have a bunch of them. So I technically have kids. They're just Would like, you sell me one? In the freezer. We <laughs> talked about that too. So, 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 so I'm like, gay? you know, what's yeah. the problem? I'm like, what's it depends how so much. <laughs> no, that, no, it's smart. Is it, is it, is it fertilized? Yeah. With him and you? Yeah. Oh, I'll take it. So he yeah. just, he's that, smart and successful and you're gorgeous and fun. Yeah. And smart and successful. Yeah. You wrote a book. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm like, okay, so now I don't really have to worry about it as much. You know yeah, what I mean? No. Did you try to steal the baby from me after I after I, put, I plugged it in some Okay, um, so now we've taken moment. several steps beforehand. You yeah. had the baby. He's birthed you've, the you've baby. You've given birth to the baby. Yes, and I live with my gay husband. Yes. And, and Carol Gardens. Am I going to come in the night? And Carol Gardens. <laughs> <laughs> you come in the night. And Are then I steal the baby. It? Yeah, would you steal the baby? Because all the hard work was done now. Yeah, maybe. That's the thing. It's like, I'm not scared of giving birth. I'm not scared of the pregnancy. Mm. Uh, I think I would like the attention. Yes. But, you know, I think it'd be funny to have a baby. But then it's like, <laughs> like, how what funny would that it? be? if I? Yeah. But then what do you do with exactly. it? You get attention with it. That's true. But like, even in my apartment, where would I put the baby? Yeah. Just on the floor somewhere. They you can't know, move, can they? 
I don't know. I think, I, but then if you see people do it and it's like, okay, like teenagers do it. Crackheads do it. Yeah. Like I could probably do it. Uh, I probably will do it at some point just cause I've done everything else. So like, why not have a kid? Yeah. So my sister is like, that is the worst. <laughs> boredom is why you have a, boredom is why you have a kid. Why did I, why'd you have this kid? Well, why not? I mean, <laughs> I don't know if that's why I'll get attacked or for saying I'm a half veteran. You know, what's funny though. No veteran has ever gotten pissed at me for saying that I'm a half veteran. Only like people who are like, you can't, you can't I think say most that. veterans have a sense of humor. Exactly. Like if they're, I mean, these are like, you know, regular people, like they're veterans. Like That's they like have a sense of humor. They're funny. I've never met girl. a girl. Hmm? What was that? That's like my drag queen's friends telling me I'm a real girl. Yeah. yeah that's why exactly. the other exactly. like, no, you are a real veteran. Yeah. Yeah. You fought, you fought just as hard. We know you did. Yeah. That tuck is, is spotless. Well, yeah. you had the high, you had the high arch. So like your yeah. desire yeah. to serve your country was there. So that's like what makes you a true patriot. Yeah. yeah. You didn't actually go to war, but you did. No, yeah. In my own way. Yeah. <laughs> I go with to myself. Every, every day. My in demons. In between my ears. Some at war yeah. every day. Um, how old are you? I'm 34. I'll be All right. 35 in October. So we can't join the military anymore. I'm, the, I'm 33. 33 is the last age you can join the army. So we're fucked. I could never survive in the military. I would be like two days, uh, not even two days. I think like I'd be good. You know what I found out? Just, you don't have to be like, you don't have to be like a battle person. You, there's like so many other jobs in the military. Like <laughs> yeah. A work, battle person. You can work <laughs> in the cafeteria or like at the, at the, at the like the. You'd be a lunch lady. You like could a, be a receptionist. You could be a receptionist. You could be like, there's all oh, there's so many jobs. I think I thrive. Not I would. I mean, I could, where do I work? Imagine you in with a hall? high and tight bun. Hello, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Barracks three four six. Yeah. How may I help you? And well, then just blow all the guys. Is that a position? I I don't yeah. know yet. It should be veteran relief. How, you know, I, well, I mean, listen, Biden's in office. I mean, we don't know where the military's going. Yeah. We don't. I mean, no. I just. I don't think I'm not very good at following instructions. I, I've never had <laughs> like a normal office job, really, other than like internships. But Thank like, you. I've always worked like. I worked here. Uh, yeah. I work over at, I work on a comedy show at Fox. I can't Fox imagine. Fox is more real. I feel like way more real than here though. Like yeah. just the vibe. Like I did your show when you had the. Uh, Sincerely Cat. Yeah. Sincerely Cat. Valentine's Day. And then yes. they were like, do you want makeup and hair? I was like, okay. And yeah. I, I came out looking like Johnny Bravo. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, I was like, <laughs> this queen <laughs> doing my hair. He was the best. It's that remarkable. Was a fun show. It's yeah. the makeup though. I have, I have like eyelash dysmorphia. I have hair dysmorphia <laughs> because I'm wearing, I'm going to work in full drag every yeah. single yes. day. It yes. take, this took me two hours today. You to fake like hair in today? Yes, That's I have clip-ins in. Nice. And And uh, like I, when I come in sometimes to get my makeup done and there's like the audience waiting outside, they're never like, oh, hey, Kat. They're like, is that Kat? Yeah. <laughs> she comes in just like yeah. hobbling in. Yeah, with a I'm cane, like. A big rig vein. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy Williams would drive to her show. Yes. Like she was like walking like a hot mess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's fantastic, but it's also like, I feel like, uh, like I don't look like this uh, when I wake up in the morning. How big is your studio? I didn't even know like. Your studio audience was, I mean, I knew there was a studio audience. Is it big? Is it like, yeah, it's, it's just like watch what happens live size, like 50, 60 it's, people. Yeah. It's, it's up to, it hits up to 80 and it just like depends on like the day, how many we have, but it's, uh, it's pretty often. That's it's really exciting cool. for you. Yeah. It, is. it changes the whole dynamic. If we had a studio audience here, I would We'd be, enjoy this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's also makes me less, less insufferable. I'm not going to say sufferable, but imagine if I wasn't getting that attention from yeah. a live audience of people clapping for me, like then I, I don't think my marriage would be working as well as it is <laughs> yeah, yeah. because I'm pretty bad as it is. I'm like, babe, 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 babe. <laughs> and you know, he's like an investment banker. He's not just sitting around. He's pretty uh, Army busy. Ranger investment banker. I know. And he's what? Hung. And he's hot. And he's hung. And he's nice to me. Where'd you guys meet? You met, you're we with met someone on, that's nice to you? Yeah, I know. And I wasn't Whoa. into that for a while. It wasn't like, we met on Raya. Oh, mm -hmm. I never met anyone on that set. I was on there for like two years. And I think I, cause I like to be the star. That's why I couldn't go on there. I don't want someone else trying to be in the entertainment business. Yeah. It's my thing. That's exactly why. Go behind that desk and make me money, daddy. That's exactly why, why yeah. it works for me. Cause I always dated like comedians, like musicians, yeah, that, that kind of a thing. I had like a, actor guy who I couldn't get out of my apartment forever, but we weren't together. But he also wasn't an actor. He like took classes. Do you remember this guy? Yeah, I, was, I was just <laughs> looking at her. The wheels were spinning. I was like, I think I remember who I this person is. Is Pete Davidson? I could. Yeah, it was Pete Davidson. <laughs> he thought he was Pete Davidson. He told I me. I remember this. And your friend. 
Yeah. Who's your, like your girlfriend was involved, like trying to get him out or something. Yeah, everybody was yeah. trying to get him out. And it was like, and then he like hurt his foot. So he's like, I can't go yeah, anywhere. He did like no. a fake injury to be like, I need to live here now. <laughs> yeah, he did. He gave me bed bugs too, where like, Ew. I know. And I knew it was him because like I had bed bugs and it was so gross, obviously. And then he's like, that's so crazy. My friend whose house I just stayed at, he just had a horrible yeah, injury. Like, uh, brought them. I'm like, oh, I think I cracked the case. Yeah. <laughs> like, would you just, so then he had, he couldn't leave because of that. And he was just like, it's quarantine. Yeah, he was quarantined. He was like, I'm an actor. I was like, he, he was a waiter. And then he got fired from being a waiter. For what? And then, oh, for a broken foot. For like being bad at it. Was it even I a good restaurant? Like we can get discounts at or no? It was a five he, guys. No, he was. Oh. He, well, he, I don't know where he works now. I haven't really kept up with him. Uh, really? Although he was my waiter at a different restaurant like a few years ago. How awkward when I went. Did you, did you get itchy when you saw him? No, I did. Yeah, I was like, it was so awkward. I was with a Kennedy from Fox and so, and, and um, he was like, I'd already started dating Cam at this point, my husband. And he was like, maybe we could get a drink sometime. And Kennedy just went, she bursted out laughing so hard <laughs> that she was actually started crying. And I was like, yeah, like, absolutely not. Like, I worked so hard to get rid of you. Yeah. Like, you <laughs> He's were- He's to sink his hooks in to get back in the house. <laughs> you were a squatter in my crash. home. Oh my God. Where do you live now with your husband? We live in Hudson Yards. Oh, very nice. Beautiful yeah. place. It's still in the, I was going to ask, still in same, the same place. Same exact place. It's us, the cat and the dog. And there's no room for the baby, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. I know like if I eventually do have a baby, all the stuff that I've said about children and yeah. it's going to come oh, back. It's gonna come right <laughs> back. Yeah. You ever see those like, uh, like old, like New York city Instagram posts where it's like the baby in like the AC unit, like hanging yeah. outside the thing. I feel like you could have room for the baby there. Yeah. I would never want to like post my baby though. Never? No, I just- You say that. Do you think that? That's what Kate said. Then Kate's like, oh, two seconds. She's like, yeah, you're making me content. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess because it's just then everybody would, you know, yeah. people have so many opinions. That's the thing about yeah. me is like, most people can have some privacy. If I go into any situation, anyone can Google what my opinion is on any given topic. Yeah. <laughs> like various, many internet controversies, whatever internet controversy will arise from this. There's always one, like yep. every few days. And Let's I don't- start one. <laughs> that's, yeah, there probably will be one. What's your most controversial take? <laughs> yeah, oh gosh, I don't know. I have a few controversial takes, uh, but it, I don't want to put that on my baby. No. You know, like that's not fair to my baby. Right, no, not at all. Well, you gave up your baby for adoption. Yeah. To Marty. How is she doing? Doing great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> well, not to get all parental, but we have to have the talk. And I'm not talking about the talk about sex. I'm talking about tux. Um, black tux. It's a super easy to get on trend, top high quality, guaranteed to fit without ever leaving your house tuxedo company. Now, I've used this for many, many moons. And I actually bought my tuxedo from them because I was wearing it and I looked so good in it. I never had something fit so well on me. Um, and I was like, I'm never going to be able to find it again. That has this is quite quality that's going to fit me so well. So you have the option to buy. But basically, you go online, you fill out this this quiz, this fit quiz. And I don't know what kind of AI wizard tree they have yeah. there. Now I'm a curvy gal. Okay? <laughs> I got I got I got boobs. I got I got I got a butt. I got thick thighs and uh and um an ass that don't quit. So I always have time finding uh trouble finding suits that fit me right. So you do this online quiz. You fill a few things out. I think you send a picture in maybe, and they send you the exact sizes. What's great about it is if you get the wrong size. You get the, you check a couple days before you try it on if doesn't fit perfect you send it right back and they get it to you right before your event so you never have to worry about not getting it and the selections are like you never seen before most times when you're a big girl like me you can only pick between the, the classic black they have so many different styles there they have like a you know different uh, flare patterns for the for the spring and summer they have uh, this great velvet one that i wore for east uh, for, uh, for christmas and for new year's they have the best options for for any guy um, and if you have a wedding going on it's the easiest way to get all your guys fitted you just do it right online and probably i think they even give the groom like a free tux or something yeah i have a wedding uh, memorial day uh, that I got a uh, tux from Black Tux, so can't wait to wear it. Yeah, so you're definitely gonna have you tried it before? Uh, no, this will be my first time. Well, it fits sure you, great. Make sure you use our discount code. Um, and I'm going to hook you guys up as well. So if you have a hunt, your honey, one of these look hot for a wedding, you're, you're getting married, you have a zesty event to get to, you're going to like what you see over the Black Tux. And right now, the Black Tux is, um, is about to go and you need to rent a tuxedo for your wedding or special night. And right now you get to the, if you go to theblacktux.com slash out and about and use code about, you'll get $20 off your first order. That's the Black Tux, the Black Tux.com slash about and use code about to save $20 off the Black Tux.com slash about and use code about. Um, we want to come to your show at Fox. You should. Like, I want to be on your show. Can we be in Fox. the audience? And yes. Then, I want to be on maybe, the show, not in the maybe show. Maybe we do like, <laughs> like a pan and then we're there. But you don't have, you don't, you do have guests on Gunfight, Yeah, right? we do. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah, you guys should. I will definitely what would talk we even to talk? I would be like, we'll do you a guys segment. are so quick. It's like, I don't know. We can do a segment. What would our segment? Let's bring. Let's let's work this out. Well, let's try to make it benefit benefit us financially, so we can get <laughs> we can get a sponsor to send us over there and 
plug a fake commercial while, while we're on <laughs> yeah. there. Mamitas. Yeah. Joey and Pat are here brought to you by Mamitas. I don't even know what we would. I guess it's your show is so planned out. That's I the nice thing about working at a network is you have like producers and your show is like thought out. We get in here and we fucking wing it. Yeah. And we just sling it and wing it every day. Well, yeah, it depends too because it goes off the rails a lot. We've had a lot. I mean, we've had a lot of different guests on our show. Like yeah. we had, we've had Roseanne on, right? But we also had I like Marianne Roseanne. Williamson on. Yeah. I mean, it's always the cool thing about it is there's a lot of groups of people that are together that you would never see together any other way. But that makes the best show. Like that's yeah. like Andy Cohen does that. He'll have like. Dennis Rodman with like Lisa, oh, Lisa Vanderpump. Dennis like, Rodman. Which actually kind of makes sense. Dennis yeah. Rodman is like my ultimate celebrity crush. Really? Since I, when I was like a little girl, even when I was like a toddler, I told my dad, I was like, you want to I love Electra. him. I want to marry him. And my dad was like, dear God, like <laughs> get her. Get her. Get her I saw him at the Abbey once and he was rude to me. What I don't do? doubt it. I don't remember. He was just like, you say hello, you say hello to my, my entourage. I'm going to talk to you. Like <laughs> weird voice. Right? Entourage before you say hi to me. I was like, oh, okay. All right. I can well, see that. I could see him being rude. I have straight up like on the show been like when I was hosting one time, I was like Dennis Rodman. I did a whole segment about him just because I'm so pro Dennis Rodman. And I was like, <laughs> I may be married, but I'm not dead. And people were yeah. like, that is so rude to your husband. Like he must be. So I'm like, he's fine. Like he, yeah. I never pretended to be anybody other than exactly who I yeah. was going into it. So yeah. he must be into it. You had a, for her 30th birthday, she well, it was your 30th, right? Yes. She arrived to her birthday. It didn't in, look 30 yet. In a hearse. Yeah. Yeah. In a casket. Yeah. But that was like a very Dennis you? Rodman-ish vibe. Rock and roll, punk, like 90. Yeah. yeah. And, Were you at the party? <laughs> no, I saw it in page six. <laughs> <laughs> I, threw I think my, I was invited. I was like, I, I did invite know. you. Yeah, you did invite me. Yeah. I threw my own funeral. Um, yes. Because. It was, in, it was so crazy. Well, that's Can how. You Google Marty how did you get the picture? casket? Well, that's. A, that's, <laughs> that was, that's how I'm, I. Became, I'm an acquisitions queen. I want to see how you acquired all this. So I was. That was the toughest part was trying yeah. to get a hearse for rental and a casket where I was like, we need it for a little bit and then we'll give it back. Yeah. So I was, in, I was in the green room talking about it and there was like these, this couple sitting there like, oh, we know a guy and it turned because they were friends of the show and it turned out the guy they knew was Jerry only the bass player for the Misfits. Mm. So apparently he's like a fan of the show. So he had a casket. You know, he, <laughs> I got one in my, in my spare room. He had, he built me a custom casket. His mom sewed a pillow into it for me. It had lights on the inside and then the hearse he just has because he just has a hearse. It's like oh, full and sparkly. It's still at his machine shop. So <laughs> his machine, you're the most like, that's the most nightmare before Christmas. Oh, like you're sitting Dennis on the casket Robin. on the book. Yeah, well, that's a different cat. My other one's still in his machine shop. <laughs> I'm noticing a theme. We had to do a rehearsal where I had to go to his machine shop. I took a day off work where I laid in the casket. We drove around just so I got used to it. But we pulled so out in front of like this steak and sushi restaurant. There yeah. It is. And then I came out of the casket. Oh my God. And then there were smoke Beautiful. machines coming out. And then I walked out. And then we were at this steak and sushi restaurant. And then I had, there was like picture, like, you know, the photos of me everywhere and the yeah. candles. And then I made my dad give me a eulogy. <laughs> so, <laughs> your poor father. <laughs> dad, so imagine your daughter's dead, right? Yeah. This How is at the David Busters in Times Square? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's where the party <laughs> was. And then you go and you claw, grab her the claw machine and bring her out. Yeah. Well, we yeah. did the. That was the first party. And then we had people, certain people. There was the after party that was in deep Brooklyn. And it was like open bar, top shelf liquor till six in the morning. Uh, and then I had more people over afterwards. And like my serotonin and dopamine were off for like three months after that yeah, party. Yeah, yeah. It was like how, because what I thought was like, okay. And I spent a lot of money on this party. I was like, this I'm is like peak party cat. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I'm never going to have a <laughs> yeah. wedding. So yeah. let's just go for it. I actually, this is the less than a year before I started dating my husband. But I was like, let's just, let's go for it. Let's rip it up. And, you know, I just don't get the point of a funeral when you're already dead. You can't hear all the stuff. So I was like, yeah. I want to hear these eulogies while I'm very much alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who gave, who gave the best one? Your dad. Were they like, were people like getting emotional? I feel like I couldn't give a eulogy without like actually getting emotional. Oh, I could. I mean, my dad, <laughs> my dad, you would mind. Yeah, my friend gave one. My dad gave one. Um, everybody came. They came out in like funeral attire. They had little, you know, hats oh on. And I, you know, it was. I was actually very comfortable in the casket. It didn't bother and me. And then you tried to casket. kill yourself by alcohol and drug poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> the funeral's yeah, already paid for. I better, I better cash in. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I just, I, I guess because like if you turn thirty and you're a woman, people are like, ew. You and know? you were single this time. I was I was, was so single 2018 that, I was so single at this time there oh. was the guy was like at my apartment during this time and I gotta find if I, that photo keep talking I'm I gonna find that photo I was this. like you can come to the party he's like I don't really think I'll know anyone I'm like that's fine so he comes to the party and I didn't talk to him the whole entire night and then he was like 
you didn't talk to me all night. You're like, you're right. I did not. I did not talk yeah. to you. I did not talk to you all night. <laughs> and he still, again, had a, had a hard time getting rid of him. But mm. it was a great, it was a great party. There's me and Kat, our, our crazy night. Oh my gosh. See, see, in COVID, my apartment became the bar. Because there oh. were no bars. Oh, yeah. You couldn't go out. Especially you couldn't go out. You'll get uh, tagged as a spreader, a super spreader. Yeah. That was such a ridiculous time. Yeah. Oh, oh, sometimes I think about, I'm like, how did I, the amount that I was drinking because my house was the bar. So, like, Kennedy, <laughs> yeah. she has two kids. She'd be like, I'm coming over. Any of my friends, I'm coming over. And I'm like, well, I don't want, I don't want people to think I'm boring. Yeah, yeah, So, I guess I'm drinking tonight. And then I reached a point they where I was your just, pod. We had a, we had, yeah, we had, like, the shambong where, like, you the the bong for champagne. We were like we were like bonging voo, like just to, disgust, like just <laughs> horrible behavior. And I, we reached a point where we were like, we can't do this anymore. Yeah. Like this is not. Perish. Thankfully, the Gutfeld show wound up going to five days a week, and then I no longer had time to live like a complete degenerate. That really saved me. My biggest, my husband, he's like, you're like a border collie. You need to work <laughs> because <laughs> that's what the, those dogs apparently. This watch they this go nuts the, if you don't work. The, watch this is the controversy. I have a border collie yeah. without a job. <laughs> Fuck yourself. But yeah, they, they'll destroy things. So that's if I if I don't have a lot of work to do, then I just like I create I create issues you, for attention and for a little drama. And but at least you recognize it. I do recognize it, so I keep myself busy. Who was your drinking partners during COVID? Uh, my friends, Lee and Aaron. Lee and Aaron. Yeah, yeah we just kind of stayed together. I found myself on, on Feidelberg's apartment on 14th Street. I live like two houses down from him. So that was like, a, I think I, I lost weight somehow. Yeah, like, never, I was you guys never boozing. stopped coming to the yeah. office, did you? Uh, we, we had a radio show that on Sirius that went to like Zoom shit. So we would like record a day before, which was great because it was a 7 a.m. radio show. But the office never closed, did it? No, never closed. I mean, Briefly, I got right? I got hired during peak COVID and like everyone was here like it was normal. Yeah, but that's, and I came from Louisiana, too. So like it was like as no normal change. as it was there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Work wise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was slowed down, actually, because I had that like surgery that I write about in my book where I had the ostomy. I had an ileostomy what for is five that? weeks. Yeah. What is that? It's like a shit bag. I had like a colon, a hole in my colon. Like I had a stomach ache, went to the hospital. They're like, oh, you need a shit bag. And I was like, okay. For the rest uh, of life, you thought you were going to have that? I, they thought it was going to be three to six months, but it ended up only being five weeks. Oof. I say only like it wasn't the most yeah. absolutely traumatic experience of my life. What caused it? it? Not sure, uh, but I like almost died. So I had the bag. And that was, oh my God. Yeah, but my, like I was engaged at that time. And my husband, like, he still had sex with me when I had the bag on. <laughs> Did you which, put something pretty over it? Like, like a little sachet or pair of panties? Thank you for asking. There was yeah. actually a, like a, a belt that I there's, dazzled it. There is a company that makes lingerie for people who have ileostomies. And I did. Oh and I would like God. strap because also you just don't want it like flapping around. Yeah. You don't want to look at a, a like a load while you're oh, it's a different kind of load. Yeah. It's like liquid. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's my flex. If anybody ever in my entire life is like says I'm not attractive, ever look like a little boy or look like Macaulay yeah. Culkin with a wig on or whatever. <laughs> then I just say like. These are all just off the top of your head. I, just them up. Yeah. I had. I was hot enough for someone to have sex with me while I had. What'd you do? Tape it down? You the, the spandex it's like a spandex belt that I would hold it in place and like cover it up. But oh I'm like, you're God. not, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're who's good. that attractive? That's you know? insane. Because we, oh. we didn't take, you know. That's true. Are you okay okay now? I'm okay now. I have like a little scar, which is like kind of cool. It's like right there. You can see it. Th that's a fucking. Yeah. Not to make you feel weird, but well, that's no. a scar. My small intestine was out of here. Yeah. Yeah. It comes so out. then I had it reversed. And there were some complications. They told me I needed oh, a man, blood man. transfusion. And that was on January 6th. Oh, so you weren't even there. No, yeah, I wasn't <laughs> there. I just want to clear this up. <laughs> yeah. Remember that guy we were following that has the OnlyFans? And he has ass home there. He has the same thing. Who? He was, there's some guy on, online that we were following. Remember he had that? The bottom? I have to pull him up. Yeah. No, I, I vaguely do remember that. We would pull it up. You have quite... He follows a lot of people on OnlyFans. I just started doing that. Okay. But yeah, he was... He was something else. Well, mm. I said that actually at the time that like from now on for the rest of my life, I could technically start an OnlyFans and nobody could give me any shit because I'm like, look at my You're survivor. Scar. You're a half veteran. I'm, and a yeah, survivor. I'm a half yeah. veteran <laughs> and I'm showing everybody that you don't have to, you know, it's fine. I'm breaking the stigma. I had this uh, ostomy. Breaking this. Were you like sneaky excited about it a little bit for attention? Yeah, no, you, well, you the, are, you are, I you actually, are. I, I, I didn't tell anybody at the time because like, how do you have that conversation without people being like, are you OK? Yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so now where do we go? Yeah. Um, but at the time, even like Gutfeld told me he was like, you're going to have a best selling book just if you even write one chapter. <laughs> I about love this. that and so I, much. I was like, you're right. You're right. But it was in COVID. I was like mostly alone the whole time because like you couldn't have visitors. So I just was sitting there like, what just happened to my life? How did you? So. 
th- you've been wanting to write a book before that, obviously, yeah. or was that the thing you were like, let's do it? And then you wrote this during COVID? Yeah, so. There's a lot of pages. I there's know. a lot of pages. You, ghost write, you have a ghostwriter? No, I wrote every single word myself. Oh my God. It's, it's a, the thing about this book is a lot of the chapters can also kind of stand on their own if there's yeah. like one thing you're interested in yeah. more than another. But when I was recovering from the first surgery, I was talking to my dad. He's like, what have you not been through? And you're only 32. You. And I was like, well, that's true. But what's the use if we can't really talk about it? Right. And so I just think that for me, every tough thing I've been through, being able to laugh at it is what gets me through it. And a lot of people feel that way. But yet we're always telling people, oh, those serious things, you can't joke about them, can't talk about them. And that makes it worse for all the people who are going through it. So I talk about, you know, all the horrible relationships I've had in this book, I talk about my mom dying. I talk about the shit bag. I talk about being broke and living in LA. Uh, the the scabies, the bed bugs, the you know various <laughs> calamities and issues that I had, and the way that like laughing at all this stuff is the only reason that I'm still standing. Oh, it's got to be. That's like there's nothing off. Li- at least on this show, like yeah. we really, we follow the same rule. There's nothing off limits. And every once in a while, we'll get a guest in, and it's like if you don't know them, like you test the, like I know I can say anything around you totally. and like fuck with you. And it's the same yeah. way. Like we'll get someone in and we kind of test the waters. And if it like, doesn't like hit right away, yeah. like you're really quick to notice it. He'll be like, oh, this isn't going to work. It'll be like 15 minutes. Yeah. We're done, but we have to be able to laugh at everything. But you yes. don't know until you try. Right. That's the thing. Like it, it, so if, Oh, a comedian makes a joke and it's, you know, doesn't hit, then it's like, okay, they're done. It's like, well, they didn't know that. Right. It was yeah. going to go. Th- you, gonna move on. you never know what's going to hit. This podcast is sponsored by better help. Um, Marty, how's your mental health? Uh, my mental health is doing actually very well lately, thanks to uh, the work of the kind people at BetterHelp. Do you know that since I started BetterHelp like, two years ago, there's not a week that I went by that I didn't do it, even on vacation? Isn't it great? I mean, well, you know why? Because I don't have to go anywhere. I can just do it from, from my hotel room, uh-huh. right from my bathtub. Yeah, anywhere. Right from the beach. I've done it from the beach before. Literally with headphones on. On the beach? On the beach with my, <laughs> my, with my headphones on. Talk about talk about a relaxing experience. You go to the, the therapist, <laughs> you can lay on the couch. I can lay on the beach with my therapist, with my headphones in, a towel over my head, and uh, you know, and just enjoy myself and fully get into the the, the and the mental stability I need. Man, uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, so um, that's why we're giving back. Now, Barstool has a great perk here. When you work here, you get um, better help. As a perk. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's probably my favorite thing about working here besides all the other stuff. But yeah, like, so, yeah. yeah, so if you know what better help is, it's an online, 100% online therapy. So what you do is you go online and you fill out a quiz. It's a brief questionnaire and tell you a little bit about yourself and what your needs are. And within about 48 hours, you're matched with your therapist and you're able to switch your therapist at any time if you don't like your therapist. I did it once when I first started and I just can, I'm, I'm, we're, we're home girls. Um, but, and it's great because the more, normal therapy is so expensive. You have to go to the place, drive there, especially when you're feeling down. You don't want to go in the yeah. car. And dry there, sit in the waiting room, and then have to talk to someone face to face. With better help, you don't have to see anyone if you don't want to. You can just do it over the phone with your earmuffs on, or you could do a video chat if you want, or you can just do a text or a chat. You could schedule them however many times a week that you want to do it. And it has really changed my life. Yeah. And if you don't like your therapist, you can just ghost them. That's another thing that's just so great about that. They never help. have to know. Like in the salon, when you ghost your hairdress, you still have to see her in the salon. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Th- this, you don't have to see them. Um, but if you haven't tried better help yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. You take care of your body with your, with your, uh, with your physical health, you take care of your mouth with your dental health. You have, to keep, you have to take care of your mind with your mental health. And especially now during May, it's a perfect time to start, which is Mental Health Awareness uh, Month. Um, if you visit betterhelp.com slash out and about today, you can get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash out and about for 10% off your first month. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this podcast. And back to the episode. Did Pissed you do stand up ever? I did stand up uh, like on and off for a really long time. Yeah. This is my third time quitting. I'll probably <laughs> eventually go back to it. Um, I did it for years and it was really really fun but now it's you know i just i'm you busy make too, much, too much money to do i'm doing job. i mean it's like, i'm doing really well i'm you know it's i i don't know i could i don't have the time to devote to it to make it you know right. what i would want to but i'm sure i'll go back to it at some point in my life because it's addicting and it's super fun and you just have to be able to laugh you, at the tough stuff yeah. How many copies of this have you sold? It's number three on the New York Times list. So I don't. Uh, Do you get like a list? Like, how does it work? Like, you get obviously a slice of every. We're going to talk business. Yeah. You get a slice of like every book sold, and then your publisher takes a cut. And so you're like got a running count. Or they like, give you an advance first. Yeah. Okay. You get, the money, advance, get all the money first. Yeah. Got you it. get the advance, and then you get, then you make, I make like only like after the advance, like $3 a book. But I've sold, I, I know in the first week, including audiobook, including hardcover, and like, digital i sold like about 60 almost like fifty-seven thousand units <sighs> and then copies of actually the hardcover book i sold about th- like thirty-five thousand. but the new york times i actually sold more than the two 
above me because it's like curated different. They count independent bookstores more yep. than Amazon and stuff like that. And wow. I, I watch I watch younger. I know exactly what it is. It's, it's, it's a loophole in it. What is yeah, it, the show? Well, a lot of time, a lot of people buy like a lot of the, like the Fox Mate right, or someone will buy a bunch of copies. That's like for for press and PR, and they count that towards that. Uh, so that's what, but it doesn't count. Like people say it's not real, but it is it is, it is real. Yeah, they'll count. They count Amazon less, and I was num the number one top selling book on Amazon that week for Good nonfiction, Lord. but they count those as less. So I sold the most, but I'm number three, which again, very It'll happy climb, with being though, number probably, three. Right? I'm very happy with being number yeah. three. I mean, like literally yeah. I was a cashier at Boston market. Like that was my first yeah. job. Yeah, that dude. was my first yeah, job yeah. out of college. I was a Boston market cashier. <laughs> so I feel like the Boston market cashier to New York times bestseller it's pipeline. Insane. I think I'm the only one in that pipeline. I remember when it's called Boston chicken. Now I'm aging myself. Yeah. <laughs> Way yeah. back in the day. What was your first job? I told you working at the salon. Oh, that's you were sweeping up hair. You started behind the chair. I was no assisting. I was washing hair. Okay, <laughs> very good. Mm -hmm. I think mine was to mine was uh, Tedeschi's slinging cigarettes. Wow! Didn't Blood you work trash. for Andy Cohen at one time, and he Dude. thought you were straight? Yeah, and then he fired me. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, all right, that's that. <laughs> that's because you and that that girl were uh, g gossiping all day. Me and who? It was Chow Jones. Oh yeah, me and Haley gossiping. She's you know Haley. My yeah, I do. Yeah. She's very funny. Mm -hmm. She's been crushing it too. But um, everyone, make sure you get this book. Uh, before we funny. go, Kat, I have a question oh, yeah. for you. Uh, you did this video when you worked here, like way back in the day. I was like just a fan uh, where you went to was it Daytona Beach, uh, like right before the election. Oh, that was Cancun. Oh, it was Cancun. <laughs> yeah. And it was it's a balls to the wall, like crazy video. Like, what were the outtakes of that? Like, like, I can't even imagine. Did you like, go to the wall. Like it you're was, going up to people like making out like Trump or Hillary. Yeah. Like, and shit, like, yeah. It was just me. and Ga It was such a smaller operation. Oh, yeah. Tell him about what how it used to be. You're going to love this. It was just me with a microphone and Gaz had a camera. And that was oh it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Gaz was the camera guy. He was the yeah, only yeah. person who did it, too. So we went to Cancun for a couple days and I had never been to spring break because I didn't like have like that kind of money when I was yeah, that age. Yeah. You know, I was like, what do you, I'm working, you know, and uh, I went, it was like, hey, you know, what do you think about ISIS? And they'd be like, ISIS yeah. is great. Like, I love ISIS. <laughs> and, like, these kids were so drunk. And I remember the one was this girl that I th was thought was dead in the ocean. Yeah. And I went yeah. up to her and she was just laying like by the sea and like just getting brutalized. Like, she was just laying there on the beach. And then that was another person getting brutalized, by the way. She was laying and she didn't move. I was like, hello, she didn't move. And I was like, I think she's dead. And I was like, this is going to be like one of those like videos where I'm like being ha yeah. ha. Uh -huh, and there's a dead body and I don't you're know dead. Ah. Hey, what do you think oh no you're dead and uh it turned out she actually was alive but you always yeah. wonder like they were so eager to be on camera and yeah. like I, I like why you know how was that with how was it traveling with gas back in the day you did juggle did you juggle with gas too? I did juggle with gas that's like the crazy we have to show you oh. a video after oh, everyone yeah. if you're watching right now google cat tiff barstool cancun and juggalos yeah two of the funniest man on the street videos we've ever done yeah really, that was truly. a great one the good the juggalos one I mean that was the easiest content that I ever got and yeah, yeah. we left after the first time I was like threatened and like physically <laughs> uncomfortable yes. yeah. yeah but those people I mean I, we were just asking people like what's the craziest thing you've seen and a lot of their answers were, I was just you're like and that's it, a federal crime and sir. again I was like <laughs> again it's just it's just me and Gaz and we're like <laughs> Who are these people? But it was, I mean, they were mostly really nice, except for the guy that threatened me at the end. What so. did he say? Do you remember? He was like, don't talk to them. Like, you know, the corp, the best thing about being a juggalo is that nobody knew about us. Now the media, and at the time I was like, it was media. hilarious because yeah, Barstool. The media. You're like, so yeah. you have a fifth grade education. Yeah, I was like, shut, bar, shut the fuck like, up. Barstool, like we were so small at that time. I did a lot of an other, I did one called Boobs. <laughs> um, boobs against Trump, or, and so it was like a, pro, a topless protest against Trump, and I just like marched with them, and I was like, so I I'm I'm fine with like whatever, like it, I just why do how do you go from point A to point B? Like yeah, how right. is walking with your boobs out, <laughs> which doesn't bother me, going to make people not like Trump? I don't understand, and I just kept following, and then the organizer of it, I absolutely went like crazy at the end and was like saying the stuff. Kim like, Jesus is Jesus is gay and like screaming <laughs> with like her shirt off. Uh, uh, that one was good. The May Day one was good. I dressed up like Santa, walked around. I used to love doing these man on the street videos. Like I You're hated them. doing them, but like I am good at it. Yeah, yeah so yeah, good because yeah. I didn't care. I was like, all right, let's. Let's go. Let's get some content. And, you're and you had a camera and a microphone on you. Like that attention you need, Mama. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, it was Haley. Last Mrs. Dow Jones plug because she's like naturally quick like you. That's like every once in a while she'll go out and she'll do man on the street. I'm like, this is what you need to do. It's the funniest thing. You should do man. We should do man on the street shit. Yeah. Maybe we get a trip out of it. 
Instead of foot in the goddamn belts, where yeah. we go? Yeah, Can- we go? Gaz and I went to Cancun for like four days. Or yeah, something I love like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> and the hotel sorry, was like, didn't get it. Need another day. The hotel was like so nice, and yeah. but I mean, we did like film a lot. The video was like I don't know, like seven minutes or something. Yeah, it was. Like that. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't it, short. It was not short because of these kids were just like put me on camera. Like they were like, hey, like they were, I was <laughs> build that shots fucking with the wall. Kids. Like, the girls yeah. got <laughs> wild effect. <laughs> Once yeah. sees a camera and they just want to be on it. I guess so. I guess oh so. But those, yeah, those were really fun. I got you know it was. I got to, I was like, oh, I have this idea. We're going to do this. And then it was like my schedule was too busy. And then we didn't really have enough camera guys. And I wasn't able to do all the ones that I wanted to do. How did it end with Barstool? How did your relationship end for those of. It wasn't uh, dramatic, really. Yeah. I mean, it was like my podcast. I had like no direction on my podcast. But then I was doing the thing that I was really good at was the videos. I was very good at that. But it was also like I was working at full, very full time at Fox. So I'd be like, OK, I have this time in my schedule. Maybe they didn't have a cameraman for this person. And then we were still kind of talking about maybe working something out. And then I got even busier at Fox. So I worked at that show that lasted for like four months. Yeah. <laughs> but at the, there was really nothing drama like at all. Would I you mean, ever come back? I love it here. I yeah. like I, I, I've been back. This is now in two weeks. I've been back yeah. my second time. <laughs> I wish we I don't know what it was the first time we missed our schedules. We were on KFC. Check that out, too. It was very funny. Yeah, I had a good time there. Well, the book Cat Tiff, you can't joke about that. It's available everywhere you get books. You're going to love it. Hilarious. Some of the I mean, we got the the uh, endorsements on the back, a Dr. Drew endorsement. Yes. Oh my Lord. You're friend. You're like friends with him. I'm very good friends with him yeah. because I was uh, at the green rat Fox and I made a joke about how I was going through the same breakup. This is a different guy. I looked like the 30th time and he was like, let's go get some coffee. And he was like, <laughs> kind of like help me exit this actually horrific, like abusive relationship. So after that, you know, we became closer and then I started dating cam and he was like, look at me. He was like, do not, fuck this up. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> this, like. yeah. So yeah, he's, we, our wedding was actually at his apartment building. So we're really close. Really? Yeah. Incredible. He's a great guy. Love it. Well, make sure you check out the book, follow Kat on social and see her every night. What time is uh, Godfell done? 11 PM. 11 PM, 11 PM every night. Check that out. Thank you, Kat. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.